Welcome to this lecture on medical law. We'll be reviewing the introduction of the General Data Protection Regulation and the Data Protection Act 2018. Again, here is our legal disclaimer. The information that I am providing here is intended for educational purposes only and with all information provided being well documented in the public domain. Under no circumstances shall we accept any liability for any loss or damage incurred as a result of improper use of this lecture. If you require independent legal advice, please seek a professional legal opinion. Changes within European law set to introduce new regulations surrounding data and how it's handled by organisations. The UK has therefore sought to update the 1998 Data Protection Act to meet the new GDPR, or General Data Protection Regulation standards. The new Data Protection Act receives royal assent in May 2018 and will ensure ongoing compliance post-Brexit. GDPR has resulted in several updates in the Data Protection Act, specifically ensuring data protection laws are up to date with the digital age, it supports all living individuals with a right to access their personal data and request copies of it, it provides greater control on how organisations can use personal data and introduces greater levels of accountability, including substantial fines for any data security breaches. It further introduces the new role of a data protection officer, which we'll look at later. In line with GDPR, the Data Protection Act updated its data protection principles, now focusing on six main points. It states that personal data should be used and processed lawfully, fairly and transparently. It should be collected for specified, explicit and legitimate purposes and be processed in a manner compatible with those purposes. Data should be accurate, relevant and limited to what is actually necessary for purpose. It should be kept up to date and inaccurate data should be rectified without delay. Data should also be stored securely and protected against unlawful processing and accidental loss, destruction or damage. And finally, personal data in the form that identifies the data subject should be stored for no longer than is necessary for the purpose for which it is required. Exemptions in relation to public interest and research may of course apply. The updates further reinforce accountability on what is termed the data controller. In healthcare, this may be the hospital trust or even individual GP surgeries. It is therefore important organisations maintain up-to-date records and are able to demonstrate how their practice conforms to the new regulations. In many cases, this may require an update to organisations' data protection policies, plus regular audit, process mapping and risk assessments to support the evidence of compliance. The new European GDPR regulations have provided a definition for what constitutes personal data. It defines it as any information relating to an individual or identifiable natural person. This therefore can include a patient's name, their date of birth, home address, contact number or any hospital numbers. It goes on to further introduce special categories of personal data. This includes racial and ethnic backgrounds, political opinions, religious beliefs, trade union membership, genetic data, biometric data for identification, sexual life and orientation, and the most significant one for healthcare providers being healthcare data. GDPR also introduces six lawful bases for which data can be held and processed. Fortunately, only three of these are truly relevant to healthcare. These include consent, Individuals must provide informed consent on how their personal data is being used and what purpose for. Contract. Personal data is held for the purpose of fulfilling a contract. And vital interests. The processing of the data is required to protect an individual's life. The National Health Service holds vast amounts of sensitive personal data in the form of medical records in both hospital trusts and community practices. 
Patients under GDPR regulations must provide consent for their information to be stored and used. Healthcare professionals must also have access to the records in order to carry out their duties. This therefore comes under the requirement for provision of healthcare umbrella and presumed consent. Healthcare organisations commonly issue privacy notices enabling patients to fully understand how their personal data is being used. In order to facilitate this, privacy notices are published as posters within the healthcare setting. Privacy notices used in this way must inform patients of the following. Which healthcare organisation is holding their data and reference the relevant data protection officer's details? Why their information is being held and what it's being used for, including the potential recipients of that data and how long it is usually stored? There must also be a legal reference justifying the above usage, along with individual patients' rights. There must also be reference to safeguards should information be required to be transferred to a country outside of the EU. As previously referenced, patients also have the right to know what information is being held by healthcare providers. Plus, they have a right to access such information. Patients requesting such information need not inform the organisations their rationale for doing this. The new regulations made a number of changes on how and when patients have a right to access their data. From 2018, requests for access to medical records need not be in writing and can be verbal. There should be no fee incurred unless there is manifestly unfounded, excessive or repetitive requests. In this case, a reasonable charge may only be issued. Following any request, copies of records must also be provided within a one month period. Any records involving children over the age of 13 require the child's consent. They also have the right to refuse access to medical records. Where a request of access has been made, this must be documented in the patient's records as well as any delays. Patients have several further rights with regards to their data under the GDPR and Data Protection Act. They have the right to rectification, so where a patient feels that data held upon them is inaccurate or incomplete, they can request an amendment. They have a right to erasure. Patients can request deletion or removal of personal data where there's no compelling reason for its continued use, and that can be under the following circumstances. The data that is held is no longer necessary for the purpose in which it was collected. The particular individual objects, and there's no legitimate reason for its continued use. The data is being unlawfully processed, or the data needs to be destroyed to meet a particular legal obligation, such as a court order. They have the right to object and restrict processing of data. This means that they can prevent information being shared from an NHS trust back to the general practitioner. And the right to data portability. This allows patients to have data passed across several different surfaces. For example, a patient may wish for their medical records to be accessible for insurance purposes. With greater levels of organisations accountability for personal data under the new regulations, where a data breach is identified, it's mandatory for the Information Commissioner's Office, or ICO for short, to be informed. The report must state the nature of the breach and the likely outcome, the details of the Data Protection Officer for that organisation, and the measures that have been taken to deal with the breach. Any reporting must take place within 72 hours Otherwise, failure to notify can result in a fine of up to 10 million euros. Now, we've made reference to data protection officers, but what exactly is their role? The new regulations have mandated that all public bodies, inclusive of NHS organisations, must employ a data protection officer. Their particular role is to ensure both organisational and employee compliance with current regulations, this is through appropriate training programmes and advising on data protection impact assessments, as well as conducting internal audits. They are usually the first port of call for patients who want to request access 
to their medical records or raise concerns. In addition, it's the role of the Data Protection Officer to cooperate with any investigations by the ICO. Where organisations are found to be non-compliant with current regulations or where data breaches have occurred, the ICO acts as a regulatory body and has the ability to issue fines up to 20 million euros where appropriate. Furthermore, where organisations fail to demonstrate safety in managing patient data, individuals themselves may seek additional compensation. So let's review what we've learned. The Data Protection Act of 2018 provided a much needed update to the 1998 Act and brings it in line with the European GDPR law. The Act in UK law further ensures continued compliance after the UK's departure from the European Union. The new regulations create greater emphasis on organisational accountability and reinforces greater power for individuals and their access to their own personal data. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell and leave us a comment down below, letting us know where you are studying because our team love to know. Any questions and topic requests are of course welcome too. See you next time.